So lock you. I don't know why my phone does that, but it'll just, I guess it's the timer on it or whatever, because it'll just cut off in the midst of me doing this video. So I got to um, figure that out. But what I was going into, um, basically, a guy knew had a Masonic um, book, and you got these different books like Morals and Dogma and History of Freemasonry, but this book actually showed pentagrams and whatnot, and I was going to buy the book from him. He only had the book. I know this guy. I grew up with this guy. So he was always, like, he worshiped mammon. He wasn't necessarily trying to be a Mason. That's one thing funny about him. He, you know, we called this guy Hell. That was one. Of, I ain't going to say his whole name, but we called him Hell. That's how wicked this dude was. But certain things he wouldn't do. Uh, so long story short, though, um, he had this book, and I realized what it was, and I was going to try and buy it from him only for the fact of trying to actually bring out what was in the book. But the Lord didn't want that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, books have spirits on them, so... You know, I think I told him what it was, and he said he burnt it. You know what I mean? Because you know he used to go to bookstores and sell books. You know what I mean? He, you know, we we both grew up in the ghetto, little ghetto boy. So you know, he always chased money. So lock you. But for those that don't believe, because I've been trying to look, I know um, Pike may, may mention of something. And um, people don't believe what masonry is. So this is coming out of a mason's mouth. Um, this is, because um, like I said, I know he, he's supposed to be mentioned in his book, Morals and Dogma. But when I went to go look it up, it won't go straight to the quote. So um, somebody took the time to actually, like Freedom Ministries, they took the time to actually um, quote this. It says, General Albert Pike, Grand Commander, Sovereign Pontiff of Universal Freemasonry, giving instructions to the 23rd Supreme Councils of the world, that which we must say to the crowd is, we worship a power, but to, but is the power one adores without superstition. To you, Sovereign Grand Inspector General, we say this, and you may repeat it to the brethren of the 32nd, 31st, and 30th degrees. The Masonic religion should be, by all of us initiates of high degrees, maintained in the purity of the Luciferian, meaning Luciferian just means light bearer. So they have the knowledge you know, of, of of the left hand knowledge on the side. You know, when you go into um Nahum, it tells you that the well favored harlot, harlot, the mistress of of, of um witchcrafts, meaning mistress is a master. I was just listening to the elder break that down. When you go into mistress, you know, like um, you know, you usually hear master, and then when you hear mistress, that's the female master. And America's always equated to a harlot as well. We're the we're the female of the Most High. And he's Edomites are the whore, you know what I mean? You know, because, you know, America symbolizes a, a great whore, you know, the mistress of witchcrafts and sorceries, you know, and they have mastered and puzzled out, um, you know, um, sorcery. Because when you go back to a lot of the traditions, like masonry, that goes all back to Egyptian um, magic, Babylonian magic, you know what I mean? Um, you know, the whole money system, the fiat currency, that's all a Babylonian money system. It's witchcraft because it creates something out of nothing. You know what I mean? They, you know, they, they put value on something that's not really valuable. So by taking, like this debt note, like I always go into the banking system. The banking system, literally, they can lend you money that they don't have. But if you want a loan, they lend you this imaginary money, money that's numbers on a piece of paper. But yet and still, you have to put up some real collateral, a physical thing. And then if you renege on that loan, they can take your real assets. So it's sorcery, you know. And we being, we have the light on the right-hand side, you know what I mean? So to a certain extent, we're the light bearers as well. So in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine, if Lucifer were not Yahweh, no, Salakia, let me take that back. If Lucifer were not power, would Adane, whose deeds prove cruelty, perfidity, and hatred of man, barbarism, and repulsion for science, would Adane and his priests communicate him? See, the thing is this, and they they truly believe this because you know Esau. That's proving this is Esau because you know the law, the the, the Most High God got laws such as commandments that you're supposed to abide by to live by, but they want to live carnally. They want to be a god. They want to eat whatever they want. They want to do whatever they want. They want to lay with, with beasts. Scripture tells you not to lay with beasts. That's bestiality. They want to lay man on man. 
Scriptures tell you not to do that. That's homosexuality. That's a filthy, abominable sin to the most high God. You know what I mean? So, um, at the end of the day, they call it barbarism. You know what I mean? But it's just showing you that, like, literally, and, it's, and the thing is, what they're going to realize is that, like, they don't have the true understanding of the most high God. They may have understanding of certain things, but, you know, not to have complete understanding and to have, you know, some understanding is not complete understanding. So they may have, you know, breakdowns of scriptures and may know what certain things mean. But, you know, that's just like the, the brother, um, Rakhal Kron, I believe I'm saying his name right if I'm butchered this, Salaki, the brother from um, London, though. He was saying, like, with the DNA ancestry, like, basically, he went into, you know, reports because, they, you know, you know, got people like vocab that say, oh, well, that's the case. Prove it through DNA that we the Jews. He said, well, we don't have to prove it. You know, it's a spiritual thing. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, and you don't have to believe it. We can, give a, we can care less if you believe it or not. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, still. And to show you how spiritual it was, he was getting sp uh, spiritually attacked on there. You know, he just doing a video out the blue. All these Edomites get to calling him out his name. And it was just deep. It's showing you how, like, we always spiritually battle him. But he went through using their information to debunk it. Because he's like, you know, you can't. That's not 100% true. That's why you got 10% uh, Native American, 15% Irish. You know what I mean? Like, you can't. Because you know, the way DNA works, they, it's like basically, you know, you get part of your DNA from your, your mother, part of, well, from your father, part of your DNA from your mother. But we all know by the scriptures, Numbers 1 and 18, it says, you are what your father is. So, you know. <laughs> Flat out. So whatever uh, pedigree your father is, that's what you are. So if you're Edomite, or your father was an Edomite, you're an Edomite. You know, and if your father's an Israelite, you're an Israelite. Salaki so for digression, it says, Adana is also powerful for the eternal law that is there is no light without shade, no beauty without ugliness. Now he's talking about the duality. And that's balance. See how he has some understanding? You know what I mean? But because the fact that, you know, the, the, the power of the Bible, our our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, basically has law, statutes, commandments. That But this not it wasn't set up for them. You get what I'm saying? It was set up for his chosen people. Now, where they messed up at is when they claimed themselves to be those chosen people. That's why scripture talks about who are you to declare my laws and statutes. Roughly paraphrased. It says, no white without black for the absolute can only exist as two powers but it's not two powers it's one power with a dual nature you know what i mean it tells you in the book of isaiah chapter 45 and verse 7 that the most high god created the uh, darkness and the light well the create the light and the darkness he created the good and evil you know it says the most high do of all these things so at the end of the day you know uh it's not you know he you know satan shantan plays a role but you know like they said like they said you got uh the most i got is is dual nature you, you get what i'm saying um i was listening to the i forgot who it was it was either the elder apostle ram or the elder gabar and he's speaking on you know uh you got the left hand and the right hand you know when you go into um uh, witchcraft or sorcery they usually call it the left hand path yeah it's, it get deep you know what i mean um it says Darkness being necessary for light to serve as its foe, as the pedestal is necessary to the statue and the break to the locomotive. Thus, the doctrine of Satanism is hearsay. And the true and pure philo phys ph philosophical religion is the belief in Lucifer, the equal of Adane. Now, I just broke this down. Lucifer is so showing you how they are um, confused and, 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 and confounded and don't. And, 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 and as much as they have, as much power they have on this on this side, how 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 the Most High have them blinded. It tells you in the scriptures that the deceived and the deceiver are his. So you know it tells you, uh, you know, the so called white man who we call the devil, uh, Diablos, meaning deceiver. You know, but he's being deceived by the Most High as well. But Lucifer. Power of light and power of good is struggling for humanity against Adonai, the power of darkness and evil. And, you know, when you go into certain um, religions and certain um, cultures, like um, you had Hermes, and Hermes supposed to brought, was a messenger, he's supposed to uh, brought the, um, the knowledge, 
you know, um, what was that? Mercury supposed to brought the light, you know, but these all mean different things. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, for those that are uh, more initiated, you know what I mean? Because you're going to a lot of those Greek stories and think that they're just simple stories when in actuality they have meanings behind them. You know, even to the point of the fairy tales, modern day fairy tales, or even comic books. You know, I just recently learned that. But my demon knew that. You know, she was going to um, a lot of those little, like Hansel and Gretel and a lot of those little, um, I can't think of the name of those, um, what they're called. But those stories like Hansel and Gretel and certain stories like that, you know, it was a book that talked about their esoteric meaning, meaning their hidden meaning. So lock you for all that talking. So um, all that being said, it made me think of, um, because the, he, the elder made mention of this book and it's called The Two um, Babylons and it's by a guy named Alexander Hislop and I'm sure they read it and I like scan parts and pieces of it but I usually or at one point in time I was doing series certain series on certain books I would read so for me to read them I we can read them together then I got you know so cause like I said the way the elder formatted his video I'm just kind of lying back and then adding to and putting my spin on it and then coming out, like I said, because because he he mentioned the book, so I said, well, heck, maybe that's the spirit. Maybe I should read it. So I'm gonna probably read for like ten minutes, and then next time I'll go and read more and more, Lord willingly, until the spirit jump off of me, like as Elder Malcolm would say. <laughs> it says, "The Two Babylons" by Alexander Hislop, and upon her forehead was a name written, "Mystery Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots and Abominations of the Earth." Revelation chapter 17, verse 5. And that's talking about AKA America. Now, where again, these people get it mixed up. But this was uh, like, this book is very old. I think it was written like in the late 1800s. And um, literally, he's referring to, um, you know, um, the, the Catholicism or the uh, Roman Catholic Church, you know, which is a part of Babylon because when you go into the three city state, you got. Uh, Rome, London, and, and, and America, the United States. You know, that's that three party state system because you got um, Rome is their religious um, system, you know, which is, has everybody ba uh, blinded like the elder one into that. When you go into like like that hat that he wears, that's just a, 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 a you know, it's a, a fish hat. And when you go look at ancient symbols and pictures of like, um, uh, what was that? Uh, not a series of uh, um, a Babylon. <laughs> They literally uh show you with Dagon with the Dagon worship and they wore them hats that are actually like well the 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 um the the Roman Catholicism mirrors their things after you know Babylon because at the end they Babylon came first or uh London which is their financial um system you know you know and then America's New York where the stock change is that's you know a part of it as well but. You know, you got London and then, you know, our Pentagon that's shaped in a star shape, five points. You know, that's their military might. So let me get into this. It says there is great difference between the works of men and the works of Yahweh. That the same minute searching investigation which displays the defeat, the defects and imperfections of the one also brings out the beauties of the other. The most finely polished needle on which the art of man has been expended, expended be subjected to microscope, many inequalities, much roughness and clumsiness will be seen, but if the diminishing new beauties will still more delicate that have slacky. It said microscope it said expended, but if the microscope be brought to bear on the flowers of the field, no such Results appear instead of their beauty, diminishing new beauties and still more delicate that have escaped the naked hour forthwith discovered. Beauties that make us appreciate in a way which otherwise we could have had little to or not, neither do they. Salaki. It says, instead of their beauty, diminishing new beauties and still more delicate that have escaped the naked hour or forthwith discovered beauties that make us appreciate in a way which otherwise we could have had little conception of the full force of Lord 
of the Lord, saying, Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they array like one of these. Okay, let me jump around. So this is where they went off at, because it's like I said, it says there have never been in has been any difficulty in the mind of, of any enlightened Protestant in identifying the woman sitting on seven mountains and having on her forehead the name written Mystery Babylon the Great with the Roman pap apostasy. And the thing is, they went off on that because, like the elder said, you know, when you go into um, they equate um, Rome and the papacy and the Catholic you know, Roman Catholicism to mystery Babylon because it sits on seven hills. But it, like the elder apostle said, you know, when you go into that, it really breaks it down out of the scriptures. It tells you what it is. It tells you the seven Kings, meaning seven nations of Esau's rulership, you know, and then it breaks it down. You know, they got the chart. I'm not about to go break it down. Cause to be honest, I don't know them just off the top of my head. That's my fault. That's where I'm going off at. But you know, I mean, I'm sure I can pull up the chart, but I mean, sometimes we got to do a little work ourselves. You can't just be given everything. Um, so that's where they went off at. No other city in the world has ever been celebrated as the city of Rome for its situation on seven hills. Pagan poets and orators who had not thought of eludicating prophecy have alike characterized it as the seven hilled city, thus surrounded for itself seven heights with all walls. Okay, so it, let me jump around. A Roman citizen, now with this characteristic of Rome, has ever been well marked and defined. It's always been easy to show that the church, which it has its seat and headquarters on the seven hills of Rome, might most appropriately be called Babylon. Let me jump. Because at the end of the day, uh, you know, a lot of the Roman Catholicism I mean, you know, when you go into Christianity, uh, basically, it, Catholicism means, uh, I believe, universal. So when you go into the Christian doctrine, it's off completely, not just because it's not actually following the scriptures, but, you know, literally, the doctrine is up under the, like, basically, all the Christian churches go up under Roman Catholicism. So in a way, you know, although... Rome isn't Mystery Babylon, a.k.a. America is, or America is, at the end of the day, because of that is the religious system that is literally followed um, in America. Because like I said, you know, the prevailing religion in America is Christianity, I believe. But, you know, that's quickly dwindling and diminishing, showing you how these people truly don't believe in the scriptures. But I can attest to that. I got a personal testimony. I remember when I uh, was going through my testimony and I was homeless and I was seeking Yahweh because of, you know, what I was going through, what he was sent, taking me through. Um, I went to a church, you know, <laughs> and it was a Methodist church and I'll never forget. And um, I would go like every, you know, week or whatever. And um, every Sunday and, um, Literally, I was talking to this female that lived in the Philippines, and she literally was going to church as well. Now, you know, the major religion over there is Catholicism. So we both went to church. I'm going to a Methodist church. She's going to a Catholic church. And I asked her, and we were asked, like, what did you learn in church, or what scriptures did they bring up? Now, the you know how you get that Bible track. Well, not a Bible track, but how, you know, the, the schedule for the church sermon. So it tells you the schedule, what's the scripture going to be read, yada, yada, yada. So the, the, the minister never brought out the scripture. He brought out his little, you know, he, he did a smooth words and smooth talking. But literally, the scripture that he had on the uh, schedule was the same scripture she said they brought out of her church. This Catholic church, but I went to a Methodist church. So my point being proven that they literally are up under them. That's probably why that 501c3 and you only can say what you can, what they allow you to say or otherwise you uh, jeopardize that status. So, yeah, you know, and, and, and when you go in the whole point of this book, you know, I did a lot of running my mouth. So I'll, I'll start back up probably like to later today, Lord willingly, or tomorrow I'll start here. But you'll go into you'll figure out, realize how pagan this Roman Catholicism is. So uh, before I end it, I'm going to get this scripture in the book of Nahum.
This is the book of Nahum, chapter three. I'm gonna get straight to the point. Because of the multitude of the because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. And this place is indoctrinated in witchcrafts. Because like I said, at the end, when you go back and really look at the architecture, look at the philosophies, look at, you know, um, you know, just how this place is structured, it's all based on, you know, ancient societies, ancient cultures. It tells you in scripture that the most high, I mean, Salaki, it tells you in scripture that Esau had has done a diligent search. So not only has he searched the scriptures, but he searched all, you know, the ancient civilizations. He's the archaeologist that or created archaeology, dig, digging shit up. You know, that's why he's always finding Dead Sea Scrolls, proving to you that the scripture's real. Although, you know, the most I put a spirit on people not to believe certain people. But not only did they look up that, but they also came across, you know, you know, when you go into the Rosetta Stone and that they're deciphering of, you know, the Egyptian, um, you know, um, hier hieroglyphics and whatnot. You know, even young Pharaoh said that. He said, how are you going to actually say what that means when literally you based it off of your understanding? The Rosetta Stone was how they deciphered it. That doesn't mean that that's how they, what it means. And it's just like with the um, DNA ancestry or ancestry DNA or whatever the fuck that, because that's the whole thing to get at people that gullible. Esau is a big ass, you know, just snake you know, and swindler. <laughs> you know what I mean? He swindled the whole country. But Salakia, I, you know, I'm a, a little bit all over the place. Um, point being, this place is, based and built on witchcraft it tells you that in the book of isaiah chapter 47 you know what i mean um so you know and like i say i'm gonna get into this book because like i said it is a very deep book because you know although it's not completely 100 percent accurate and you know it could have you going off you know it it it, 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 it it's not milk it's more meat you know but you know what i'm saying if you led the proper way you shouldn't go off because like I said, you, you, you know, you, you, you eat the meat and, and spit out the bones. So, um, Lord willingly, I'm going to come to this and, 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 and begin anew or, uh, or, or continue in this lock and not begin anew, but continue in this Lord willingly a little bit later. So if, um, you're so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Seminole Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, or be destroyed. And with that, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Hashem, Rachak, or this book of Thumb, double honor to the apostles and elders, the great millstone, who rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and sincerity, as well as risking their lives on the freedom to do so. Shalom to the Akwa, to the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord, willingly, this is an edifying video. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad. In the land of the other nations, appear like the other nations, but subscribing to this truth to you, I say Shalom. Till next time, I'm able to come with another lesson. Shalom, Shalom, Mawak, Labba Ball, Shalom.